Well, first of all, thank you for all of your support for participating in this community this morning and all the other days. And also thank you for your financial support for this community. Could not do this without your help. Please continue to help us if you can. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Set aside time. Set, set aside time. This practice will not happen just spontaneously or just when you feel like it. And if that is uh, still your attitude towards that, that will not last. That will back off. This is not something the ego necessarily wants to participate in. Although it does initially, because the ego wants to attain enlightenment, or it thinks it does. Ishi <laughs> day. So set aside time. Uh, and what that is, uh, find a practice that uh, the one I recommend, of course, is sit down, hold still, watch the movement of the mind, shikhan taza. Just simply sitting still in an environment where you're not much is going on and you're just watching what comes and goes. In this way, we train our minds to see more clearly what's happening in the other movements in our life. <clears throat> Is there something wrong? Thank you. Oh, so watch the YouTube comments. Oh, oh thank you. Do I seem irritated? You're not going to respond? Of course not. Jeff, what are you shaking your head no for? Why are you shaking your head no? I did not think you seemed irritated, so Kuzan. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate that feedback. Leon, are you in Greece? Yes. That's where I'm at. What, what city are you in? Athens. Athens. So you haven't got, driven up north yet then, correct? Not yet. That's on Wednesday. Very good. Are you being careful? Being careful. Yep. And we're well. Very good. Very good. So thank you, thank you for all those wonderful pictures and beautiful pictures. I don't know if they're available to everyone, but they're really beautiful of that country. So look forward to you meeting Pinar. At some point. Me too. So set aside time. Uh, set aside some time. It can be anything from just 10 minutes, but set it aside. It won't happen just because you happen to think of it in the afternoon. Maybe a little bit, but you need to set aside a time and schedule yourself to sit down, hold still, strike a bell. Sit there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two hours, four hours. Check the bell again. Get up and hang out. Don't worry about post-meditation. If you're doing enough uh, <clears throat> shikantava, the post-meditation will take care of itself. If you're interacting with uh, sangha, if you're interacting with teacher, with the teacher, and if you're interacting with the teaching in some way. That aside, time. it could be you may get up in the morning and you may have set aside a time where you're going to do the sevenfold Mahayana Puja, which is a very powerful practice that takes some time and it involves uh, offering to the altar, offering flowers, offering incense, uh, lighting a candle, doing prostration. Uh, what are the other ones on top of that? Um, the third is confessions. How many? Con there's prostrating, offerings, confessions, 
rejoicing in the qualities of enlightened beings, asking for the teachings, asking for the teacher to remain and dedicating the mirror. And there, there are styles, forums uh, on the internet that you can look those up and you might find one that you like. And if you can't, then I think there's probably something on, on the website. Is there not? There isn't. But you can contact who? Contact uh, Chazan and ask for that and he can send you something through... Uh, email or some other way and that'll give you a form you can also just um offer incense to your altar and have a seat for 20 minutes an hour It'll strike the bell get back up go into your life but do find something that you can do uh hopefully every day or five or six days a week maybe there are times when you it won't work with your schedule with your work situation with your family situation and so on Find a way to do that. In the monastery, it's a little bit easier for us because we have a structure that's all set up that you can just look at the schedule and you know what you should be doing that next uh, in terms of participation in the monastery as a practice resident or as a lay practitioner or as a monk. It's important to do this. This is not something that can happen casually. It has to be deliberate. Set aside time. And that setting aside time may be setting aside time to study the Dharma, a particular, maybe, maybe you're studying with another person. I recommend you study with at least one other person, uh, possibly with five or six people, and interact around a particular text. There's some texts we've been studying for literally 40 plus years, weekly, over and over and over. And we continue to repeat those uh, texts. Because you never, if it's Dharma, if it's a Dharma, you never can really get uh, clear on what that is because the, it's beyond concepts. However, you're going to need to work with the concepts <clears throat> into, uh, in order to approach a more ultimate understanding of what the Buddha was pointing at 2,500 years ago or what uh, Wenang was pointing at or what Dogen Zenji was pointing out, or Dongpa Rinpoche. Set aside time. Questions about any of that? June. June Chibarang, I think you said if you're doing enough sitting, post meditation will take care of itself. Yes. What is enough sitting? A lot. How much are you sitting right now? A week. It's not a confessional. There's no there's no standard. So I'm not I'm not putting you on the spot like that. And if anyone is doing any comparing here, that that's that's a misunderstanding to compare that. Some people are fully ordained monks and they practice maybe a lot more than anyone else. Some people just like Michelle, I don't know if she's here, but she just got out of a 10 day solitary retreat. She wasn't told to do that. She wanted to do that. Now that I've said that, go ahead. I scheduled myself 10 hours a week. I don't always hit it. So, well, but it's not about pity. That's the, if you have questions around that, please ask and I'll endeavor to help you with that so that you don't get, uh, um, you, you don't get pushed around. You don't buy, you don't end up being involved in your own version of passion, aggression, ignorance with not living up to a standard that you don't even know you're setting. You just feel kind of disappointed that you're not that you just set up to 10 hours. And then it's about awareness that you're not doing that. It's an amazing realization to see that you don't have to accomplish a damn thing. It's the intention. It's always the intention. And the intention will... Uh, no guarantee, but the intention actually takes you beyond the grappling hooks of relative truth, the hooks of the hooks of passion, aggression, ignorance, because the intention doesn't look for results, but it doesn't ignore them either. Again, we're back into that understanding of non-dual, not two, not one, not two. Go ahead. How's that going? It's frustrating. Again. 
It feels frustrating. Yes. That's awareness. It's not a problem. It's uh, anytime any negativity comes up, just remember the first noble truth. If you can do that, it's it's it, it will help you be more kind to yourself and try uh, less likely to dump your negativity on somebody else who's causing it. Even if they're causing, I mean, even if they're literally, you know, psychologically working on you, if you can see deeply what this is, then you'll you'll give them the benefit of the doubt because you'll realize they're suffering. And so they're trying to get rid of their suffering. They're trying to be happy. And you just happen to be the, re re the re recipient of their frustration. Oh. Is 10 hours a week enough sitting? Absolutely. And if you could do more, you, you ask me that, would you sure add on an hour? Add on half an hour, add on 15 minutes. Some, something, work with it that yourself. So you're working with that rather than live it up to a standard. Don't you really, if there's tension around feeling like I want to sit more, but I can't, or I'm too lazy. You're saying the word tension? Yes. A little trouble hearing, but I'm catching most of it. Go ahead. Tension. So if I feel tension around the amount I'm sitting. Yes. Is that a form of warfare? No, it's awareness. It's awareness. Simply put, I teach awareness. I don't teach warfare. And I also don't teach going to war with war or correcting warfare. You need to be aware of warfare, not fight with it, not push it away, not judge it, not evaluate it, do anything with it. If the evaluations arise on their own, just like leaves on a tree, just watch them. It's just part of the relative dynamic that we all are subjected to as human beings. When does the feeling of tension or some other negative emotion turn into warfare? If you fight with it, push it away, if you add on to it, it's uh, Trunk Rinpoche called it double negativity. The first negativity is bad enough, it sucks. And then we flirt with it, or then we blame somebody. We do something with it because to do something with it to the part of the consciousness that is curled up into a me or a self, it gets protection. It feels like it's gets some kind of a very subtle uplift from being against something or fighting something. You know how good it feels to be mad at somebody who's wrong. <laughs> You've noticed. You don't notice that. You're thinking about something else, are you? Yeah, you. <laughs> good. At least, at least you get it good. More. It's a good area because it's a. We're all confused by that kind of. Uh, you know, we get into that all that negative stuff, and we, what do you do with this? It's like that, that question. That very kind of question actually stops us from looking more deeply in that, into it. Go ahead. Jim Chibowing, I've talked to you about um, feeling tired after, in a given situation, and you suggested that it might be from actually fighting with what's going on. If there's If we're able to just feel the negativity and not go to war with it, will it be less exhausting? No guarantee, but probably just because it's just, you're just feeling it. It's very simple. It doesn't rotate into about it or something else about it, who did it or how you get rid of it or how are you doing it? Is it getting worse? And all the other things. My my way of saying this, and you've all heard me say this many times, if you, if you begin to see what this says, you won't care what you won't care how you feel. Because you'll see that, that the very feelings that are rising are part of dependent origination. They are not personal things. It's not your feeling. It's, it's in you. It's in your mind stream. But you're getting close to understanding, having a deep understanding that it's consciousness only. This is an illusion. This body, 
unreal. Seems very real. We we go to the bathroom. We go to the restaurant. We walk down the street. We go for a walk. We we uh, play with our dog or cat or something. Do something uh, uh, entertaining. Watch a movie or hang out with friends. And but it's, it's unreal. When when the unreality starts to show up a, as a form of negativity, then it's really, really intense. So this is why it's necessary to see that that is unreal all the time. In the midst of the enjoyment, in the midst, in the midst of the disagreement or the frustration or the not living up to a standard or all of that frustration that shows up, it's this unreal. So therefore, you don't have to do anything with it. But if you push on it, go to war with war, then you you somehow you validate the polarity and think you can somehow get rid of it by pushing or pulling or doing something with it. And then it, it gets stronger because it is uh, it buys into your belief in the relativity of it, like it shouldn't be there, like it's wrong, you don't deserve it, and all the other ego orientations that can show up. So just receive it. Just it's just everything is chocolate. Just eat it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it sure doesn't taste like it. <laughs> Didn't say it tastes like it. I said it was chocolate. Don't argue with me. Okay. It's it's just a way of food. Just a way that's something that you you have to receive it. You have to eat. You have to receive that, and that's so. It's quite often that's a an image that tends to work for when we talk about just just receive the negativity. Can everyone hear me? So just receive the negativity. If you think of it like food, like anything that walks in the door, uh, shows up in your mind stream, even though it's triggered by this or that, it's it's meant to be. There. It needs to be there. It's like you've just been served something. Be very, very generous to that. Yes. Wonderbang Ross from Ireland asks, is what appears even without adding more onto it, is is that also unreal? Could you repeat it a little bit louder, please? Mm -hmm. Is what appears even without adding more onto it is also unreal? More adding more onto oh, okay. Uh one more time so I can let it all sink in. I think he's, it's a little bit of a typo in there. So okay. I don't know which one to, what to do. But anyway, this is what he has typed. Is what appears even without adding more onto it also unreal? Yes. Everything is, is unreal. What you add is unreal. What shows up is unreal. Unreal, 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 unreal. But there, imminent, right in your face, unreal. And if you see what it is, you're you're looking at the face of the Buddha. You have to see it. If you don't, if there's the slightest bit of, of bullshit happening uh, in the back room called your ego or thing that you're trying to get ahead, make sure you don't get mistreated. Make sure everybody treats you right. Make sure everybody appreciates you. People appreciate you, Chokanao? Why? I don't know. Aren't you a worthless piece of shit? Yeah. I like the way you receive that. That's a that's a intense commentary that quite often we use on ourselves. We just we just we're just tired of dealing with our neurosis, our self centeredness, and so we sometimes call ourselves that, maybe for a few moments. And if you you of course know that I am endeavoring to help people, and I don't mean to insult you at all. You know that. But it's all an illusion. If there's one little tiny particle where you think there's some kind of thing that's not an illusion, that's true, come up here and I'll whack you one. <laughs> I will hate you, Gay. <laughs> will I? Maybe or maybe not, but I'm not angry. I, I may look enraged. I'm not angry. Is anger there? Yeah, anger is there. There's no one here. That's available to you. 
You can find out who you are, what this is. You can find it out yourself. So you can leave this room or leave this earth uh, with the knowledge of what this actually is. It's called wisdom. Yes, sir. Shoto bowing. I don't remember exactly how it was phrased, but with your responses to Jinshu, something in the area of like we set an intention to sit so many hours and we're not hitting that. And you, I think you said it's not about hitting the hours that we set. No, it's about the intention. It's much different than the relative idea of of uh, a goal orientation, setting a goal and meeting a goal. This is the relative truth, the relative world, the mundane world is fine that way. Go ahead. You may have an area where, where you're actually doing that. You're working on getting a degree or you're working on some kind of training. Then, then that that only that applies in that area because it's cause and effect. This is not cause and effect. There's nothing that causes awakening. But there's something that causes uh, you not to not realize that you're already awake, and that is passion, aggression, and ignorance. So it's about seeing those and not fighting with them and not accepting them and not ignoring them. Go ahead. Shoto bowing. Is there a time where we should try to ramp up and meet our hours that we're trying to sit? Yes, that would be situational. And you would, that would come out of your awareness rather than out of some kind of uh, uh, success or failure agenda or pushing on yourself. It's a different kind of, uh, of effort. The effort in the, on the, the path of the liberation, the bodhisattva path, is not about struggle or pushing. Uh, very difficult to, to talk about conceptually. And my way of talking about it, insofar as I'm able to point it at, it at all, is to intent, return to the intention. Return to the intention. If you never get to the cushion, that's that would be my way of saying it. You never get to it, but intend to get to it. And it, it kind of goes without saying that if you intend to get to the cushion, you will eventually get to that cushion, but it will not particularly feel like a success story because you're not operating out of that in that modality of of uh, uh, I'm I'm getting ahead, I'm doing better, I'm succeeding. Though that may be up as that may show up to some extent uh, in the, the liner notes or in the margin notes, the uh, kind of offside, some kind of a succeeding quality or improving quality, but it's secondary, if not tertiary. Go ahead. Shoto bowing. Um, even if we're not sitting all of our hours, a lot of us are still doing something related to the temple for many hours during the week, like administrative. You're not talking about yourself, are you? No, I'm thinking of the other functionaries or Udao has Dharma talk descriptions. There's just a lot of hours of other stuff. Um, does that ever replace our sitting practice? It's here again, to come back to this word I use over and over again, it's so situational. It's just, especially in living in a monastery, so many things that need to get done here. And so there are times when you might find yourself doing that in a functionary situation to uh, as far as in, in the community, if that's what you're asking about. And yes, you might find that that particular week where you're involved in that, you might, might have only sat one or two hours a week, but you are what? Aware of that. You're aware of the whole, the whole situation. And then maybe the next week you find you can sit quite a bit more. Sure, is this an area where you might recommend looking at a solitary retreat to try to get some more hours in? Uh, if you're if you're serious about this, which you probably are, if you're sitting here or if you're here, you should we should all be looking at a solitary retreat sometime in the next what year, two years. Set aside time next June. I call my bro. Okay. What do you think about? Not going over there today and doing it tomorrow if David and Jen are coming out. We do Tuesday. There's no swimming. Okay. That means I get one day before I go camping.
But as Kamala Harris said, I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job on that. You home. You home bowing. Regarding receiving during a heated situation, my intention is to receive from the emotions. The emotions that from myself. Also, yeah. I feel like I'm receiving others. How can I not seeing I'm receiving basically all myself, the emotions all from myself? Um, I'm not sure what your question is, but I, I don't see any problem with that. It's not something to me. I will, ref I will reframe my question. You said everything we see is our mind. Yes. During a heated situation, I feel like I'm receiving myself. The emotions come from this physical body. At the same time, I'm receiving from I'm receiving others' emotions, which make mm -hmm. it very hard. How can I not seeing the receiving basically is all from my myself? Bowing. If you if you just are on receive and not particularly uh, filtering out receiving this and not receiving that or or taking a, a position on anything, then you just receive everything. Sometimes it looks kind of relative, another or you, and sometimes it looks ultimate. You're just receiving whatever shows up without any particular uh, position or possession quality or or subjectivity happening or objectivity. So it will it will go back and forth, and it will especially go back and forth when you don't try to go in and sort it out and take a position and figure it out. Stop trying to figure things out. And part of the stopping trying to figure, figure things out involves seeing how much your kind of a knee-jerk reaction of ego is to want to know, want to figure it out, want to see who did what and what happened, so on. So if you can... Uh, If you can, just if, if you can, back off on that a little bit and just just receive whatever it is. It's like trees, tree branches moving in the wind, clouds in the sky, fish in the pond, uh, thoughts in the mind, just coming and going. Instead of taking what arises in your mind and attributing something like, "Well, this is this is what she's doing. This is her deal, but this one over here is mine." To go into that, it's not that that's not relatively the case, but this is what the world is running in. Right and wrong, up and down. She did it. He said. He said. She said. They said. So the idea: we're slowly over time by watching the thoughts come and go, by not personalizing them, shikantaza, just watching it come and go. Watching the negative thoughts come, positive thoughts, daydreams, plans, anything that comes and goes. This is why we don't try to. Or I don't recommend that you train your mind to be more mindful. I'm not interested in you being more mindful. I'm interested in you seeing what this is yourself. And if you're if you're creating a, a mindful personality, ego just loves this kind of wonderful, clear, loving, meditative identity, and will use that for years to keep you from seeing the truth. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Junju bowing. If we see what this is, will we still, could we still blame others for an emotion? Yes. Yeah. There's no guarantee that anything will stop or start. It's just that you'll, you'll see that it's unreal, but you might, the, the, but it doesn't mean that it won't still be irritating or just like a, uh, you're watching a scary movie. You know it's, it's you know it's unreal. That's a good example of that. You know it's unreal, but it's still scary. You can't just look at a scary movie and think, "But well, what?" No, you're wondering. Uh, you're you're worried about the person who's walking down the hallway. They don't know that at the end of the hallway, somebody's waiting to attack them or something like that. And you know about that because you're involved in the movie. So you know it's unreal, but you're still affected emotionally by that. It's like that. It's like you know it's unreal, 
And at the same time, you're just immersed right in that emotion, but you're not subject to it. When I, I with emphasis on the word subject, nor are you the object of that. That polarity has come apart and because it is an illusion. And if it's illusion, it's an illusion looking at an illusion. The ego is looking at the apparent objectivity or otherness, and they're both unreal. So you you could say you kind of like you would in a movie, you kind of relax and enjoy it. You enjoy the negativity. You don't have to get rid of anything. You don't have to do anything. You might have to grow up. Stop taking your stop taking your emotions and thoughts and feelings so seriously. That's hard. Really hard. What does it look like to still have the intensity of the emotion but not take it seriously? <clears throat> Going to be different with each person. Show it just differently with depending on the the way you're working with the, the whole situation yourself, with your interaction with others. You're kind of giving the other person the benefit of the doubt. You can see that they're having difficulty with what you're doing or saying, and they're kind of after you, maybe. And uh, but there's just more space around it. You, I, I would say, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, you kind of sense how much that person's suffering, and that's why they're treating you that way. They're suffering so much because they... they they're suffering, and so therefore how they're acting towards you may be not particularly comfortable. Follow me a little bit. That doesn't mean that you don't, that you, they get to do whatever they want, particularly. You could still argue with them, disagree with them, or even fight with them to some, some extent. It's always about awareness, never about what you do. Because what you do you don't have any choice over it. And if you think you do, you'll continue to suffer and fight with your world and wonder why you're not, why when you thought you were awake uh, three weeks ago and suddenly you're not feeling so awake anymore. Thought you were enlightened, but maybe I'm not enlightened. Back and forth, back and forth more. Yeah. Other questions? I don't Nabi. know about him. I'll get to all three. I'll get to all three with you, three of you. But I'll start with Naveed, and then I'll go to Adriana, and then I'll go to Dishid. And if there's anybody else, get in line. Thank you, Naveed Bowing. Um, is there anything more than sharpening the awareness to the sitting meditation practice, Bowing? That's that's the way I talk about it because it's uh, it's it's I don't know if anything is getting sharper or not. It's it might be getting more prioritized. What we're prioritizing is not so much what's coming and going. The good things here comes a bad thing. Here comes a good thing. Here's a nice thing. Here's a neutral thing. And on and on and on. Instead of being hooked on hooked on the thing materialism, instead we begin to see the space in which things occur and. What happens in the space in which things occur is nothing occurs. Because if it occurs and we think it's real, then we've solidified, we've grabbed, it's called materialism. We think something is true, we think our emotions are real. And somebody caused them. And we have to do something about it. But if you can see the emotion and see that it arises in a space, uh, and, and then the sharpening part comes from emphasizing the spaciousness of the mind, uh, like the spaciousness of the sky rather than the sharpness or clearness or cloudiness or dullness or evanescence of the clouds themselves. You know, with materialism, we don't get attached, just detached or ignore. We just watch what comes and goes. And then the, and then we notice that the that which watches come, what comes and goes isn't doing anything. It's just like space. It's just mind like space. Not exactly space, but it's, it's like that. So what is getting, I don't know if anything is getting sharper. It's just that the emphasis of consciousness, which can find any form at once, but if it's functioning out of passion, aggression, ignorance, it's going to go to war with something and peace with something else. It'll fall in love with this, go to peace. And then it'll fall in war with that, go to war, fighting, aggression, passion, aggression, and then... The other one that stops us from seeing the whole uh, Coney Islands of the mind, which is ignoring. 
going back into that pit of uh, disturbance called ignorance, out of which comes more passion and aggression, depending on causes and conditions that are in the mind around us, in our karma, in our past lives, everywhere. You can't find a place that you aren't in terms of your consciousness. Maybe down. More? Um, so how long can the practice of sitting meditation continue? Indefinitely. Just start and never stop. And then it will just it will just come apart. You may meditate, you may not. I med I may meditate, I may not. I may actually formally sit and meditate. Uh, probably when February comes up, which is our ongo, I probably will sit here quite a bit of that time, maybe not the whole thing. I don't plan, but since I set it up, I probably will be here. So the, your, your relationship to forms will start to change. And if you if you need to sit, then you probably will find yourself sitting, or you might find yourself going into the retreat. But just intend to do this from now on. Do it the rest of your life, you're a young man. The rest of your life. More, Navid. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Adriana. Bowing. How should we receive? Endeavor to receive someone's hostility, like express hostility towards one. Bowing. You mean hostility from someone else to you? Yes. So. Several things. It's very again. Uh, they're again situational. One is you can leave the room. You can you can break the connection. It's, uh, you don't have to put up with anybody's crap. It doesn't help anybody to be some kind of kind, loving, receiving person. And I'm talking about that. That being said, you might give it five minutes. You might work with it. How do you mean? I and mean, they're attacking you or blaming you or something and say, can you say more? In other words, you might invite them to say more. And then at some point you can see that not, not much is going to happen there other than you're going to receive, receive the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune in the form of your partner, or your next door neighbor, whomever, or your, or your mom, who knows? And I would say, do it a little bit. And then at some point, just go the other direction. You close it right down. Say, whoops, got an appointment, see you later. And then make it a soft uh, uh, departure, not not a, not an abrupt warfare. Don't add to the situation, just change the subject. Change the subject into something else called pacifying. You pacify it uh, in a very subtle way. They may be full of anger at you and what are you leaving for? And you shouldn't, aren't you gonna listen to me? And don't participate in that circularity. Do not enter any kind of discussion with someone who is confused. You can listen a little bit, but don't get into the discursive side. Don't disagree, don't agree, don't ignore it. Don't discuss it. Don't talk to crazy people. I mean it, don't, don't, don't discuss it. Further, Adriana? Yes, thank you. Uh, if I have already walked out, um, yes. It, should I return to the situation or how should I endeavor to return to the situation? Again, situationally, if it's time to see them again, it depends on, there's so many variables there. Then you come back into the situation and then you might uh, have a similar kind of protocol. I wouldn't make that protocol very strong. Though. I would just, uh, less is better. Probably less contact with them is better. You do not have to win them over. And being a on the bodhisattva path does not mean you have to appear like a helpful person to others, other people's judgment. Well, that's not very bodhisattva-like of you. <laughs> One more, Soko-san. Um, the, the person I'm speaking of is my father. Uh, yes. And I, um, I feel... I, I hear you, and I, I want to return to the situation, but I'm not sure. Should I endeavor to make peace or talk about what happened or just no, 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 leave no, it don't, aside? No. Don't, don't, don't make peace. Don't do anything. How old is the solo? How old what? How old is your father? 
He's 74. And has he had any mind training at all whatsoever? Not that I'm aware of. No, so not not it's not going to be helpful to talk to him about it. He's he is tied up, and I'm not condemning him to anything, but I'm saying he more than likely is tied into a labyrinth of belief and disbelief and passion, aggression, and ignorance, which reinforces his own particular self-centeredness. It's not wrong, it's most of the world is doing this, but you you cannot go in and discuss that. Now, if he comes to you and asks you for something, then you can respond. If he wants to talk to you a little bit, then do it, but don't do very much. In other words, don't, if he's just looking to download and dump his negativity on you, uh, then you can politely excuse yourself. You've heard of the four karmas, pacifying, enriching, magnetizing, and destroying? Yes. It's just, a, it's just a device to help you deal with the outrageousness of the world in a way that doesn't make things worse. It won't necessarily solve it, but it'll at least give you a little bit of breathing room so you can actually train your mind. Those things will not do it for you. They will just give you some breathing room so you can continue to return to the cushion, train your mind to see clearly. More? Not for now. Thank you, Bound. Jishin. Jishin Bowling. You said just relax and enjoy the negativity. What is that relaxation to the negativity? Bowing. The relaxation is just you're, you're, you're not going to fight with it. You see that the negativity is just another dynamic that's happening in consciousness. Passion, aggression, ignorance. These are not new. And when uh, when when uh, aggression arises in your mind, the tendency for the self-centered mind, for the ego mind, for the one who is still constricted by belief in a separate self who can be helped or harmed by any damn thing, is to fight with it or to blame someone for it. And when I say relax, I said, I'm just saying, feel the negativity. It will not have a particular, particularly pleasant feeling to it but when you when i say when i'm saying enjoy that i don't want to get too romantic here but it might be like enjoying a thunderstorm a thunderstorm is violent but it's out there somewhere but you can actually enjoy that there's a there's a quality of of seeing what is happening there seeing the intense energy happening there you can actually witness that in your own mind stream it's possible to do that you do not have to improve. This is a, a huge, huge misunderstanding all over the place. It's not just with the people in general or the psychological community, but with meditation communities. All over the place, trying to get better, trying to improve, trying to be more peaceful without by, by ignoring the war, rather than seeing the war is not separate from peace. You have to see it. Thank you. And as I've said hundreds of times, don't believe in anything I'm saying. These days, I've said that so many times, I think you're probably not concerned with it. But you can consider what I'm pointing at and see that you have to see that. You have to see that yourself. You have to see it. And it feels very, very lonely. You home. I think you answered part of my question already, but I still want to ask back to Junchi's asking um, the difficult situation and uh, you, there's a fight word. If I fight and uh, fight with someone during the hard situation and after a few minutes, I, I feel like I can move on quickly. That's so far how I feel. However, after a few minutes, I also feel terrible for... Uh, for that person, I feel like I was not able to uh, put others before myself, was not able to be kind to receive. Is this ego bowing? Yeah, that's ego, but it's just all you have to do is be aware. You don't have to get rid of ego, you don't have to change it. But yeah, you could say that's that is a dynamic in ego. It's, you've noticed that you're aware of. But you're good, just keep going from there. Thank you. Smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Don't you uh, dare that would be a bad example <laughs> for my kids. 
smoke a cigarette. But I'm going to tell your kids <laughs> better not do that. But you see what I'm saying? I'm saying you relax a little bit. There's no, it's nothing wrong. You're not indulging yourself to take a walk or uh, break away from any kind of negativity that's happening, either interaction with your own mind stream or with that of others. And then as soon as we can, let's get back to that cushion, sit down, hold still, and watch the movement of the mind, train your mind, do a little bit of everything. It's, uh, it's all over the place. You can do it. And as I said earlier, it, it can feel lonely because you feel like you, you might, even though you're talking to this person or talking to friends or talking to Sangha, where you're studying a lot, it can feel like you're you're alone, and it's, that's how this feels. It's the closer you get to seeing there's no self anywhere, it feels lonely. And if you begin to fill it up with activity, uh, maybe you need to do that. Maybe maybe you need to do that. But I would recommend that you. Um, what was the name of the talk? Make some time. Yeah. Set aside time. Thank you. Set aside time. Set if, if you're if you're dealing with the lonely part, then set aside some time. Go into retreat for ten days. If you can, come here and do it. So you have some kind of support from a teacher, from a community, and from a structure where we do this all the time. Very difficult to do solitary retreat uh, in your own environment or in a, something you're used to, or in a situation where you where you don't have the guidance of somebody who has a lot of experience in that working with the, the mind training in that way. Is there a final question? Isan. I'll come back to you, Dr. Mark, just a minute. Go ahead, Ethan. I, I guess I'm wondering if the the way that we work with negativity um, is aligned with our neurosis. So, so for example, it came up for me when you were talking about the scary movie. My my favorite tactic is is covering up or ignorance, and yes. looking slightly away from something that's scary mutes it. And and then I think is is that a way of working with it? Even though it, you know, I could say, oh, that's ignorance. Don't do that. Is our is our neurosis? Does our neurosis have something to contribute? Yes. What is that? Well, it's just the structure. You're you're able to look at the structure of uh, of the self centeredness, the ego. And so it's not about changing anything so much as it is about being aware. This is difficult because the ego seems just kind of, when we start to get a glimpse of it, it's like a nauseating. We don't want that. It's kind of embarrassing to be a, to be full of ourselves or to be, see how self-centered we are or how self-deceptive we are. It could be embarrassing to realize that we've been deceiving ourselves. In my case, I had a, Horrible awakening when I realized I've been deceiving the very person I asked to function as my teacher. I've been lying to him. It's very, very disturbing. And this happened way before I met any of you. Well, maybe not everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Mark. Uh, Mark Bowling. Um, I was going to ask you this privately, but I can ask you this here now. Um, I'm going to go back to jail after COVID started. You know, it's been that, that long since I've been in there to to run, to counsel men. Yes. And um, I never bring up uh, um, meditation. I mean, mm -hmm. it's part of it's part of the program, but you know, I don't specifically bring it up. Do you? Do you think I ought to suggest that to people? Um, I'm not a teacher, obviously. What is the structure that you're going there as, as a, as a AAA representative of Alcoholics Anonymous? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I would leave it situational. You could, you could tell them that you meditate. 
And then th when they hear that, and you say that, that it's helped you or however you want to. And then if they uh, if they uh, ask you about it or want to learn how to do that, then um, teach them how to do it. I mean, you can you can give it. You don't have to be a a, a full blown uh, you know Dharma teacher with you know lots of. Uh, a teaching experience or credentials or anything like that or empowerments and so on but you could teach somebody how to sit down and hold still and watch the movement of the mind and then answer questions when they just based on what what we talked about you could actually use uh, uh if you wanted to you could use the the meditation primer there's 17 guided meditation you can just read one of those to them so this is what my teacher says to do keep cool. it very simple simple is better and even when responding to questions Simple is better. Very simple response. More? No, thank thank you. You'll probably hear from me. <laughs> it's just, it's probably just well. have trouble. You'll probably you. hear back. You'll probably hear back from me too. Very good. Thank you so much. So we're having ordination this afternoon. What time is that? 1 Okay, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, Mozuka will be fully ordained as a monk. Can people join that? I'm so. so you can join that if you want to join that uh, ordination. We don't, don't do those very often. There's not too many monks here. Hi, my name is Shoka. I'm a monk at Sokokoji, where I'm committed to training my mind under the guidance of my teacher, Sokozan. We rely on your support for our programming including a scholarship fund to cover living and tuition costs for those who are practicing full-time at the monastery. Thank you for your generosity.